So welcome to Oasis Live, um, our STEAM spotlight for tonight. We have two fabulous, passionate educators <laughs> um, here who have decades long experience with kid inventors. So we have on our, I don't know how it looks. I guess it looks like that on everybody's screen to our right. Uh, Mr. Jim Bruner, he is the Sultan of Systems, and he'll explain what that is at the Pass Foundation and president of the board of the Ohio Invention League, which is a part of the National Invention Convention. And Jim creates opportunities for kids and communities to problem solve and make the world a better place through invention and design thinking. And tonight we were also supposed to have um, Abby Fisher, AKA Professor Prototype, but uh, unfortunately she had a death in her family. So we wanna send her our love for sure. And so in her place, we have Mrs. Robin Hillsmeyer and she is the executive director of the Ohio Invention League. So you all will tell us about your uh, backgrounds, but thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really, really appreciate it. So the thank first you. question I was gonna throw out to whoever wants to start, um, what do you do for a living? Okay, well, since you introduced me first, I'll, I'll start. Okay. Um, I work as a um, project manager basically and um, Workforce Development Officer for Partnering Anthropology with Science and Technology, which is the PASS Foundation. And mostly what I what we do there is we try to get people to realize that culture is a really, really, really important part of the human condition. All of us have culture, but not all of us use culture to our benefit, especially in education. And that's one of the things that I find so attractive about Invention League and Invention Convention, inventors in general, and you, Erica and Maurice and, and Oasis, is that you understand that you have to create a new culture that is gonna change the world, if you wanna change the world. Doing things the way we've always done them is not the best way to change the world. It's the best way to grow frustrated, but it's not the best way to change the world. You need to literally invent new ways of being in the world and having the world meet your expectations. Uh, and that's why I love young inventors, because that's all they do is they say, this is not appropriate. I have a better solution and I don't need your permission to have a better idea. I'm going to act on it. And my goal, my passion is to say, absolutely do it. What do you need? I will get out of your way now. Right, right. Definitely more risk, risk takers than we are as adults. So I agree. Absolutely. And then Robin. So I um, I get the pleasure of working with a student inventors and um, Professor Prototype. Yes. Um, all <laughs> so uh, my job here at Invention Convention and in, in Ohio Invention League is to help um, keep those programs uh, moving along so that we can continue to provide the program for free, um, which we do at no charge to students or uh, to any of the educators who work with the uh, program. Uh, so while I work a little bit behind the scenes and uh, Professor Prototype and Amy are uh, more um, working with our educators, we work very closely as a team to support our teachers and our inventors and all educators across the state um, and their who are working with the program. What did, what did you say, Jim? And, and their families. And their families. Yes, that's an important part um, as we know. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk um, a little more about the actual Invention Convention and Ohio Invention League in a second. But I wanted to know from you personally, what is you guys' earliest memory of wanting to get involved in STEM or STEAM? Mm -hmm. Erica, I hadn't, I hadn't really remembered this story until I got your questionnaire, uh, and that memory came flooding back to me. Um, when I was seven years old, growing up in the Mojave Desert in California, <clears throat> and I started um, building uh, a, 
a mock-up, if you will, of the Apollo lunar capsule out of a 50 gallon bucket or a barrel, steel barrel. And what I realized very quickly is that the capsule was just a piece amongst a much larger array. So I had to build a platform that the capsule sat on. I had to build a telemetry tower that the capsule would launch on. I had to build the, the fuel tanks underneath it. Then I needed the mission control to track it. And I just started thinking about all these threads that had to be pulled in order for me to really go <laughs> six miles above the planet into orbit and then <laughs> 12,000 miles to the moon. And I became aware that there's a lot more to science and technology mm -hmm. than just facts. You know, you have to be able to solve problems. You have to be able to see relationships between things and understand why they matter or if they don't and be able to see beyond them. And that's the real trick is reframing one, the problem, and two, rethinking how you're going to solve that problem creatively. And that's my earliest memory of being really amazed by science and technology, engineering, and math. Because once I realized that orbits require telemetry and vectors, mm -hmm. I learned a new word called calculus <laughs> and what you need to do in order to do that. And so it, it's all been quite a long journey. And now I get to work passionately alongside young geniuses that are integrating all of these awarenesses and, and skills to change the world. And they do it without fear. And that's my greatest pleasure. Minimizing <laughs> fear in these young people's minds and getting the adults to, to understand they can actually build a lunar capsule. They're not just mm -hmm. modeling one of the other. They have the skills, the technology, the time, and the passion mm -hmm. and teamwork abilities to do that. So that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> do you still have that? No, it's long it's gone. Long that's four lifetimes ago. Okay. <laughs> that would have been awesome if you still had it. That would. <laughs> and then, Robin, your earliest um, memory? So um, my story's a little different. So <clears throat> I graduated from college and I had an education degree. So I went to teach school. Um, and, and this was back a number of years ago. I taught elementary school um, back at the time where we were able to use all kinds of uh, creativity and we had lots and lots of flexibility. Um, and, and so we were able to do a lot of those really cool, fun things. And I could see the kids who um, didn't know that you couldn't do that because they could. Right. Uh, and, and so um, I was then kind of uh, recruited out into the corporate world where I was for many years and then kind of circled back around when my kids were young. Um, I had them do some of the camps um, where they were inventing and saw all of the really cool things and fun things um, that they were doing and, and how it just fostered that creativity and eventually ended up judging for the state convention. And then I was really hooked after that, <laughs> after seeing... Um, hundreds and hundreds of just such inspiring kids. Uh, so it was at that point that I really and seriously got um, hooked in and actually started to work for Invention League and the Invention Convention. Okay, okay. So you kind of answered my next question because it was going to be how did you get involved? So it started with you being a judge initially, and then you kept, I'm assuming, volunteering and then made it to executive director. <laughs> that kind of how. So that is how it started. Okay. I uh, judged at a state event and um, thought th that it was just the coolest thing in the world. And um, when the opportunity came up, knowing that I had um, both nonprofit management plus, in, in addition, I was an educator, um, it, it just seemed like something that for me was a no brainer that you know, I really wanted to be a part of. Uh, and, and now when I talk with potential judges and volunteers, uh, I will always say to them, 
once you see this in person, and um, I, I don't know that there's many other words besides inspiring, um, because it, it just kind of sums it right up. It's so inspiring uh, to see the kids and their creativity and, and what they do. Um, it, it's very easy to, to get sucked in and think, I love this and I want to keep doing this on and on. Okay. Okay. And then Jim, how did you get involved? Uh, carbon copy of that. Okay. In, in 2001. Nice. I was working at a state agency and someone said, Hey, there's this thing called an invention convention going on at Columbus state and they're looking for judges. And I'm like, well, I can't be a judge. I'm not a judge. And they're like, um, yeah, you can, you just have to have knowledge right? mm -hmm. and curiosity. And I went and the exact same trajectory back to vectors um, that Robin's talking about. <laughs> and I saw these kids and they were absolutely fearless. But for me, I said, these kids are hungry <laughs> and if you want to continue to be a professional you need to bring the same level of passion to everything you do so it inspired me in in terms of professional development if these kids can solve these problems on their spare dime right you can do better and, and that's what made me fall in love with it and i'm i, I was 20 years ago wow uh, and I, I just won't stop i won't stop because <laughs> I'm more and more and more of uh, a cultural skill set. And when you meet someone like Zora or Claire or several of the other serial inventors, mm -hmm. you see it. You see it. That you are actually giving the world, gifting the world, a young mind that will pull and pull and pull at that thread until they have a whole new fabric. And that's what we need a lot more of. Definitely. A lot a more it keeps you going for sure. And I see how energized both of you all are when you're around the kids in those different uh, spaces and competitions. So for our families on here, I guess just know that you all can be judges if you want to do that because you all are always looking for volunteers, correct? Um, during the state convention time or competition time, which is in July. So um, you can tell more about that, but also um, how can parents and educators become involved in Invention League and then Invention Convention and maybe explain the difference between the two? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know what, educators, uh, one of the things that I so love about the program is that it is extremely flexible. Um, in, in, in multiple ways, uh, flexible in that um, it's very inclusive. So your kids who uh, may be in special ed, clear up to your gifted and your talented, mm -hmm. all work together and it works beautiful to um, have all those kids working together um, in teams and collaborating on projects. Um, so that's one way that it's very, very flexible. The other way is that it can be done in so many different ways. So we have people, uh, educators who do this in schools, regular classroom schools, and their schools will hold a fair. We also have after school programs that are in schools. We have after school programs outside of schools that do it. Um, we also have a small segment of, of actual summer groups that are going to start doing oh, it okay. as of this summer. Um, it's, so again, it's, it's really, really flexible. So any educator in any of those areas, uh, and you know what, I'll throw in one more. We have kids who come in as independent inventors and we also have that group um and you don't have to come in through a school or a program uh, some of our serial inventors who went through the first and the second time they thought oh my gosh i love this and their school didn't continue to do it but they come back and they work through our independent inventor program and continue to come back um, i think our inventor who is coming back this year for her sixth time um is that is, uh i'm well i was thinking of jewel uh or oh, no yeah. um gianna uh i think yeah. it's been six times six times. so the kids 
and educators, both, any of those groups, um, can go to our website, inventionconvention.org forward slash Ohio. Um, that's one way to get all the details. You can also email info at inventionleague.org. Um, and we can get you all connected with the program that way. Um, all of the materials are at no charge. Mm -hmm. Everything's mapped out. So for groups that are doing the program and um, after school programs, they may choose to do the program in eight weeks. Um, we have others who do it in a much shorter time. They could go six yeah. weeks, uh, depending upon the amount of time that you commit to it. So uh, for our kids who are coming in as an independent inventor, the truth is if they really um, wanted to, to delve in because they love it, they could even sneak in this year through the independent inventor program and they'd be ready to go by this summer when we have our state competition. Uh, so again, it's uh, lots of different pathways in, super flexible, and um, all the materials that an inventor or a school would ever need, uh, all the information is on our website. And um, real quick, Robin, if you're a homeschooler or a homeschooling parent, do they usually come in as independent, um, their child as independent inventor? Is that how Typically, it yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And I'm so glad you That's mentioned perfect. that, Erica, because we do have a number of homeschoolers who will come in that that exact way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we have several people, members on our site, so I want to make sure that I got that in, too, um, that are homeschoolers. One of the other interesting opportunities that Professor Prototype, uh, Robin, and I have been working on is this idea of creating communities of inventors that not only um, do they vet ideas, but they bounce ideas off of each other and they bring resources forward that novice inventors or kids that aren't exposed to the invention thinking or design thinking process can model it. Mm -hmm. And we want, to, we want to grow that that community this year. 2020 needs to be the year of the independent inventor. Okay. Because the way we've always done it, through schools with a science fair model is not really the best way to deliver this. It's intimidating to some kids. It's definitely intimidating to some teachers. Um, and I think that kids and parents need more autonomy. I think if parents understood that they could give their kids this superpower, um, that they can identify, have the confidence to solve and actually come up with a solution. Um, I think that a lot more parents would be totally on board with this idea of the independent inventor pathway. And it's one we want to model. And we want Ohio to help us model it because no one else in the nation is doing it. Mm. And it's something we could be doing very, very well with 25, almost 30 years of experience at this process. Ohio should be absolutely leading the pathway in this new way of thinking about design thinking and, and invention convention. And all of these kids want to be YouTube broadcasters. All right, make an invention, <laughs> do a video, make it done. We could definitely lead the nation in, 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 in building this total model. So, so I'm putting that out. No, I love it. I love it. Um, and I like the idea of Ohio uh, forging that pathway. So kid and, or not kid and men, um, the independent inventor program is national, but you're saying that here in Ohio, we're trying to, you all are trying to make it like a staple. Create a network. Correct. Okay. Here, here, so, okay. Here More job. pathways in. Um, and, and kind of tied along with what Jim said, um, another thing that Ohio leads the way nationally um, with our own very special professor prototype is to have a um, actual family mentoring group. So any, any student in any of those platforms, uh, ways that they have come in, once you have been through the program, you are an official alumni. Okay. And Professor Prototype holds monthly family mentoring calls uh, 
we work with our kids, whether they are going on to the national convention or not, uh, the kids can stay in that program. And then the newest thing that kind of ties in with what Tim is saying, uh, we've had some amazing student inventors who have now come back to Abby and said, I love this and I would love to mentor a student who's doing this for the very first time. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I love it so, you can like put me down and if they want to talk to somebody, I'll do it um, and, and help that next group of kids who are working at it for the first time. So they'll almost be like ambassadors of the program and as you said, mentors. So you're starting that program as well. Correct. That's, okay. that's in the, the infancy stages. Uh, we awesome. have about six returning, um, six returning, as we call them, our um, serial inventors <laughs> who have now said they really want to um, come back and mentor others. So our mentor inventors. Mentor, I love it. I like the rhyme. <laughs> and I can definitely attest to, you know, our daughter, um, making it all the way to nationals that, you know, the mentoring that you all provided and the monthly calls and then the mock um, invention convention at Honda, all of that was so, 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 so helpful. You guys were just wonderful with that and very encouraging. So that next layer beyond just what she got with the school district and you know, continuing that whole year, that helps so, so much. So I would tell you know, any of our listeners who might be interested that you know, this is the real deal. I do feel like Ohio is leading the way. When we went to nationals, Ohio represented well, so. Mm -hmm. And you brought up a great point, the, the partnership with Honda. We're on our third year on our mm -hmm. partnership with Honda and the mock invention convention. And this is something we love that uh -huh. Honda is reaching out to do. But what's new about it this year is Honda saw the potential for not only professional development for their young professionals on how to deal with the public and talk about the R&D and technology that Honda is working in, mm -hmm. to give those young professionals human skills to talk to disparate groups of people. They saw the opportunity for these young professionals to mentor these young inventors and they created a whole platform around that with the mock invention convention. And that's happening organically. That's part of the culture that is unique to Ohio. And as president of the invention convention and invention league, I'm super proud of that. And that's something that we bring that's very, very authentic and unique to our state is that we have very, very passionate sponsors and participants that really want to move this forward and actually put money and time and passion behind it. So yes, I'll throw I, that out there. Yeah, definitely agree. Honda was great. Um, the employees that were uh, judging that day, they were wonderful. And so um, Jim, I know that in past talks um, that you and I or we all have had, you also mentioned um, the Shuri um, connection that you see from Black mm -hmm. Panther with um, Invention Convention and Ohio Invention League. So are you able to talk a little bit more about that, that um, connection that you see between what she did in the movie and what oh, yeah. you do in real life? <laughs> I love the movie. And I, I love the comic book character before that, but I really love the movie. And Eric and I were talking and Shuri, is my spirit animal because I see that character and she is exactly the citizen I want to create through the work that we're doing with Invention League and Invention Convention. Sure of herself, confident that she can find an answer, give you an answer and create something new on the fly through problem-based learning and just applying her singular wit and genius to the problem to create a new solution. And she does it again and again and again. And everyone's like, oh, she's so amazing. It's super superhero. <laughs> but for me, no, I see this a hundred times a year. Mm -hmm. I see Shuri everywhere in these very, very powerful, articulate, confident young women and men that show up 
with real solutions to real, real problems for them. And so Shuri for me is like, yeah, <laughs> if, if you were to mention, you'd see Shuri for sure. And, and, and it is something that we need more of. We need a lot more Shuri's and we need kids to understand they don't need to wait for permission. Right. To become right. a Shuri. They already have it. What they need is exposure and experience, but not permission. And that's what I try to provide. And so when, when we started talking about Black Panther and, and Wakanda technology and its application and its ability to change our culture, yes, everyone should have a place at the table and everyone's place at that table should be as a genius because everybody has a unique singular genius that they bring. And we need to stop questioning whether or not we should give them the right to be geniuses. No, we should give them the opportunity and get the hell out the way. That's what we should do. <laughs> Agree. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Agreed. So um, the Shuri's that may be out there, um, whether it's parents or um, educators or um, kids listening, um, this is a good time for uh, questions that you have for Robin or um, Jim that you may want to ask about. Um, know the invention ohio invention league or just the invention convention in general if you're outside of ohio you can type on this side if you have um, a question that you may want to ask so we can wait a second to see if it, any questions uh, pop up for you all to answer are you able to see the chat box too uh -huh. i can um okay. so when <laughs> When I saw what Oasis was doing a couple of months ago, uh -huh. and I saw I saw the Wakanda connection, I'm like, that is so smart. <laughs> that is so smart. That's exactly what we should be talking about. Uh, how we can really build the future, um, given what we have and, and what we don't realize we have. That's right. The beauty of, of of that is seeing the 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 creative connection between things that don't necessarily aren't obvious, but kids see it. And they act on it. And even if it's just a prototype, every prototype, every great invention started as a simple prototype and became something, right? Definitely. So, definitely. Like so that from Terrence, um, where can I get more info on the independent inventor program? So we'll have to, we'll put more information I, out there because we're developing that. Yeah, I am going to type in the, um, the address right now. Okay. Uh, for that, the uh, and it, the easiest way will be just to do info at inventionleague.org. Okay. Um, and then uh, there is also information uh, on our website, uh, which Maurice put up there. the The thing that I would add mm -hmm. is um, inventionconvention.org. And if you go forward slash Ohio. You'll go directly to our website. That will still take you there. If you go to inventionconvention.org, you're still going to get there. That's going to go to the national, and then it'll have you click on Ohio. If you want to just go directly to Ohio, um, forward slash Ohio, and you'll go right there. But either one of those ways um, will absolutely get you information. For the independent inventor. Program. Correct. Any yeah, other all, of, all of the curriculum, um, there's a full-blown curriculum for all grade levels, clear from kindergarten all the way up uh, through senior year. Okay. Uh, in high school, there's um, a curriculum that you can use uh, for educators. It's mapped to the NGSS and mm -hmm. all of the Ohio learning standards. It's all mapped to that. Um, so all that information is available. Homeschoolers, you can, and independent inventors, you can use that same exact curriculum. Um, they, they have videos with them to help you through that. Um, so it's all there ready, ready to go. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. I, I want to clarify for our, okay. our viewers. Is one, document it or it didn't happen. There's a book. There's a, a logbook and a journal that you use to document your invention. 
if you have an invention that is serially or, or seriously relevant and powerful, you're going to want to patent that. And the only way to patent that is documentation. So one, documentation. And number two is that there's a rigorous process you have to use to come up with this invention. And that documentation is part of that. It isn't just, I have an idea and I don't know if it'll work, but maybe it will. No, you need a prototype and you need to show us that you're thinking this through. It's really not as hard as you think. And the documentation that Robin's talking about on that website will walk you right through that. But you can't just come up with an idea and have no documentation or prototype idea or even experiments to show what you're talking about could really be a thing. Shuri didn't show up with inventions that she just pulled out of the air. Right. She put those ideas together and created something. We're asking the same of you. Kids do it all the time when they play. They just don't label it inventing. But creativity and imagination are key to the human condition. Every kid comes hardwired with the ability to do that. We're just asking you to write it in the book. Definitely. And I can attest again that this was the most rigorous process that Zora had gone through before <laughs> and well worth it. So um, just to kind of like wrap up, um, were there any, um, I guess, last words you wanted to leave with us? And then also um, any other ways that we may be able to support um, Invention Convention or Ohio Invention League, support you all in your efforts? Yeah. So I, I guess for my my closing thing, and it kind of goes along with one of the things that I just dearly love about Invention Convention, um, all of the things that the kids are doing are just amazing and they're having fun and what they, whether they realize or not, the younger kids don't, but the older kids do, is that they are developing skills that will make them the most sought after employees yeah. of the future. Um, Absolutely. That complex problem solving and critical thinking and creativity, uh, cognitive flexibility. I mean, we're, they're, they're just like working through mm -hmm. everything that is important for the future workforce. Uh, so uh, we, we like to, you know, have our older kids truly see that they are so connected with businesses um and for that for the future and our younger kids just have fun which is perfect we that's exactly what we wanted to do um and, and then we let their parents know you know you can't even imagine like how important this is as your kids do this and what they're gaining um for the future so i guess that'd be my closing comment on the program for getting involved oh my goodness we love to have people get involved so um we need all kinds of volunteers for our state event this year, this summer. It's we'll be at the Ohio State Fair on Sunday, August the second. Um, we will need hundreds of volunteers that day. Um, if you are a little nervous and you say, "Oh my goodness, I could never judge," absolutely you could because we train all of our judges. We'll make sure you know exactly what to do, what to look for. Um, and uh, you might end up like me and be so hooked that, you know, you're here for a long time. We're Jim. <laughs> so um, we, we need tons and tons of volunteers. And then, of course, we um, really have a passion to continue to provide this program for all students and educators at no cost, mm -hmm. uh, which means we do lots and lots of fundraising. Um, to be able to make this program free of charge. Uh, so um, if you're if you have a um, company that does corporate sponsorships or um, would like to be involved in any way um, with the state comp um, the state competition, I would love to connect to them. Um, my email address is Robin at inventionleague.org. But even if you send it to info at, doesn't matter. Um, Amy will make sure that I get that. But we're always looking for partnerships um, with businesses mm -hmm. for that event, um, as well as lots and lots of volunteers. Yeah. And so my parting comment on this is get involved. 
just get involved become an inventor parents get your kids involved let them try it if they fail that's okay failure is not a destination it's a data point don't treat it like something terrible you're supposed to avoid we learn the best from failure and the second component is if you're an alumni of invention convention or you're just someone who's really passionate about changing the world consider donating to our cause so that it's easier for us to make this free to Ohio's kids. Because, I mean, free has a cost. Um, so if you can afford to donate, do. Or give us some of your time or a little bit of your passion or talk to us about your friend. But we really have a mission of changing our culture. And we have a mission of making our workforce, Ohio's workforce and the US workforce, STEM relevant with mm -hmm. applied STEM engineering, abilities and talents that we are not fully tapping. We have a skills gap, a STEM skills gap, and this is a wonderful, fun, yeah. unique, creative way to bridge that gap. Join us however you want to do that. Follow Oasis and you will find us because we have a similar <laughs> mission. Thank you. Well, this was so great. Again, um, being with you all this evening and you all taking time out of um, your own evenings to spend with us. Um, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. And I was going to have, um, we're going to do announcements. Um, so if you all want to stay on for that, um, you can. It, it doesn't matter. But I was also going to have um, Maurice kind of talk very briefly about um, how we plan to kind of collaborate in the um, future. So or how we are starting to now. Hey, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just sitting over here quietly. Because we so. can't both kind of fit on. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a narrow <laughs> field of view there. So um, and my, my shirt is very bright. It's the lighting in here. So, so hopefully I don't blind any of you. But uh, I just want to uh, have a, say a quick announcement about some of the work that we're doing with the Invention Convention to create on Club Oasis a lab, we call them labs, uh, that will essentially uh, leverage technology, video technology, to lower the barrier of participation uh, in the Invention League and, and uh, make it a little bit easier to consume the content, the curriculum that they provide for free. And so we're just going to kind of tweak it a little bit to give it, um, to give it a little, um, I guess, uh, easier way to consume. Um, but we'll, we'll, we will be working with them in their national curriculum to uh, develop it, put it on our website, freely accessible to anybody uh, who's, uh, who's on Club Oasis. And so uh, just a short, quick announcement. Um, like I said, um, Invention Convention is, uh, is a great program, you know, yes. as a parent, engineer, problem solver. Um, as one of the, is, when I think of the programs that I feel are, uh, uh, like national level, global level in yeah. terms of uh, what you're able to teach kids and in, in, in terms of where it ranks, uh, Invention Convention is, is, de is definitely up there at the top. And so I think, uh, like Jim said, um, problem-based learning um, is how you future-proof <laughs> uh, yourself in, in, in your work, because if, you, if you're a problem solver, you really can fit into any industry, any, any uh, work, any job, because, uh, what will be valued in the future, especially with automation and, and AI, is uh, your ability to, prob, uh, to solve problems creatively. That will future-proof uh, you uh, in, in many ways. So uh, we definitely want to make sure that we uh, promote problem-based learning. So. Thank you. And so, um, again, so Robin, you said, OK, we appreciate having us on. You all didn't have to. Um, uh, turn down your your cameras. Um, but again, we we thank you all um, for taking the time out of your uh, busy schedules to be with us. Be with us um, this evening and giving very valuable uh, information to our members that I'm hoping will um, take time out to uh, do the independent inventors. Um, if they're not able to link up with Invention Convention with their schools. So we'll still be giving out information um, this year and then definitely next year uh, we'll do more with the independent inventors um, on our website as well. So 
signing off. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in um, to our STEAM Spotlight. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.